What's going on everybody? My name is CJ, AKA CG, and welcome back to another tutorial video. So I made a video covering this a couple years ago, but I wanted to go ahead and remake it just because it was maybe, you know, a little inconsistent and a little bit slow on some things. But this is going to be a straightforward guide on how to get audio from your DAW, in my case, FL Studio, into OBS for either recording or live streaming. So this is gonna depend on whether or not you have an audio interface. If you do, great, go ahead and skip to this time wherever I've got it listed. If if you do not have an audio interface, stay right here. If you do not have an audio interface, you won't have to worry about getting this Voxingo recorder. I would still go ahead and recommend getting Voice Meter Banana just to have the audio channels you'll get with that. But the primary difference is that using some sort of like FL Studio ASIO or ASIO for All as your main driver will still have the sound come through your Windows device, unlike using an audio interface. So everybody will need to go ahead and download OBS Studio. I've got the link in the description for it. This is gonna be more focused towards Windows, of course. Now with Mac, you can do some different audio Audio routing stuff so the OBS setup will still be applicable for that but not so much the audio now once you've got an OBS if you do have an audio interface make sure you go ahead and go down and get voice meter banana and Voxingo recorder now voice meter banana what it will be doing is it's like this digital mixing program but we actually need it for the digital auxiliary input it will make it'll give us this channel to send audio from FL studio to OBS with. So go ahead and download that and install it. It'll probably ask to restart your computer. Go ahead and then double check on your Windows settings. It will probably reset your default devices and change it to that. So you'll definitely want to go and fix that. Next up is Voxingo Recorder. I have not found another plugin that is able to really rival it. It's free and it works pretty good. So what it does is it will take your audio and route it to an MME device for Windows. And then we'll be using that device, which is our auxiliary send here from voice meter into OBS as a source. Now it is a 32 bit program. If you use FL studio, you'll be fine. It'll work. If you use another doll that does not support 32 bit, you might have some issues there. Um, you can use something like JBridge. I don't know that it's free, but you can use some sort of either converter or a wrapper to get it to work. So once you've got OBS and voice meter installed, let's go ahead and check where we need to place Voxingo recorder. So you want to go ahead and open up your manage plugins folder or settings menu or where whatever on whatever doll you're using and just go ahead and take a look and see where your directories are you should have some sort of either vst plugins common files vst or steinberg vst files kind of by default you know if you've installed any other plugins and i think maybe even fl you know will automatically do that so once you found out one of your directories just choose one that's listed and drag the dll file you get from Voxing the Voxinger recorder download that's actually the plugin drag it and put it into one of those files and just click on find install plugins now once it's been scanned just type in Voxingo or it might just pop up by itself at the top and go ahead and favorite it just so you'll have it and you can put it in a custom category or whatever if you want you don't have to if you don't want to and we should be set to go so what we'll go ahead and do and you can save this as a template or something like that I don't have it on my template but it is good to have so so I'd recommend putting it as slot 10 or very last in your master plugin chain I use a fruity soft clipper before it just to keep the virtual audio channel from clipping into the red or distorting and yeah so a quick little note on how it works here for the MME device we will want to click that and come down and find the voice meter aux input that's the whole reason we needed voice meter. You can mess around with the buffer count and buffer size. Um, I usually don't have any issues with that. Sometimes I've got some clicks and pops that come in and out, but if it's if it's very noticeable for you, you'll just have to kind of experiment with it and raise or lower it. Now, another important step to not forget about is changing output to MME. So you just click on it once, output to MME, Bit depth, you can leave at 16 or you can raise it. I usually keep it at 16. I have raised it in the past, but I don't know that I've recognized the difference in it, to be honest. And most importantly, you have to hit start. If you do not hit start, it will not be sending audio. <laughs> I forgot to hit start before and that was not very fun. Once we've got that set up, we're pretty much done on the audio side. Now, if you do not have an audio interface, you will want to come over here to options and audio settings and use either your FL Studio ASIO or ASIO for all and make sure it's going to your default output with Windows or whatever you use. Um, I've had issues with ASIO for all in the past as far as getting no latency or uh, having it like mute other applications, some weird stuff like that. So really it's just gonna be a matter of figuring out what works for you. Now that we have our audio set up, let's go into OBS. So as you can see, I've got all kinds of stuff here just where I've had OBS for years. Um, mine look, might look a little bit different to you. I've got the Stream Elements plugin, which I would highly recommend getting. But yeah, so what you wanna do, 
to go ahead and just get some display on the screen, let's go ahead and click source and we'll just add a new scene, title it whatever you want. Click on plus and go to display capture and make sure you choose your correct screen. I recommend using display capture so that way you get everything on your screen. Uh, sometimes in the past, if I've done window capture, it will not get the plugin wrappers or the mixer or the like menus on the mixer. So I just highly recommend go ahead and doing the whole thing. Now, if you don't want your like windows bar to show, you can just come down here and drag it a little bit. I know it will cut off your screen, but that's just one way to do it. Um, I personally, when I edit my video, I just zoom in just enough kind of like that so you can't see it as well now I do have a ultra wide monitor so that's why it might look larger <laughs> than usual if I do ever stream FL or something like that I will use of course 16 by 9 resolution and kind of zoom in on it but for me you know I'd much rather just have a zoomed in picture than I would have black bars at the top and bottom. Now we'll get to the program settings in a second, but let's go ahead and check our audio mixer. This is the most important part here. If I'm not mistaken, you will have two desktop audio. You can see my microphone here. Hey, hello. And what you want to do is choose one of our desktop audio sources and click on properties. Now this is where you will want to find your voice meter aux input and click on that and hit OK. Now we have completed the link from FL or your DAW to OBS. So just to show you all, here's a beat. Here we are getting it in OBS. So there we go. Now, one thing to note in the advanced audio properties is I do have a sync offset enabled for this source. Um, you'll have to play around with that and see what you need for yourself, but I've found that 130 milliseconds is about close enough to keep it even. The reason there's latency is because we're converting that ASIO to an MME device. So there will be about a second or more of latency you will have to deal with there. Now, another important note while we're here, if you're using a microphone with your interface or whatever source you're using, make sure you have that clicked in mono unless you're using like a stereo microphone for some reason. That way you will have it coming straight down the middle instead of one ear like microphones will tend to do if you have it plugged in channel one on an interface. Now, lastly, while we're in this menu, one of the things I highly recommend is staggering our track count. What I mean by this is when you record the file in OBS, it will give you separate audio tracks. Now, the reason I do this is because I want to have the FL Studio audio on its own track away from my microphone. If you don't want to do this, that's fine, but you'll lose that flexibility later on if you don't have it on separate tracks. If you're going to be live streaming, make sure you do have all your audio tracks on the same track though, and we'll we'll cover that in a second. So another thing while we're talking about audio, if you're going to be live streaming or recording with a microphone, one thing that you want to do is make sure your mic sounds good. So we can click on the three dots here and go to filters and add some plugins to our uh, audio chain. So you definitely will want to use a noise gate. These are the settings I've got. If you want to copy those down, you can mess with them later on, you know, to fit your setup and what you would prefer. Next up, I went ahead and boosted the gain by nine decibels. Really, the only reason I did that was just to get us a little bit hotter before going into this compressor. So for your compressor, here's some settings I found in a video a while back. Um, they work great for me. Uh, I really don't have any reason to change them unless, you know, I wanted to raise or lower the threshold here. The uh, bad thing is it doesn't show us how much gain reduction we're doing, unfortunately, but you just just kind of have to do it by ear and lastly i would recommend using a limiter at the very end just to make sure you cannot clip here so if we want to look down here as you can see our audio is not hitting zero that's one thing that's very important to remember we still have to make sure our audio and our video sounds good and is not distorting or anything like that so next up go to settings in obs and let's go to output here so once we get to our output tab just go ahead and change this output mode from simple to advanced i know it looks a little scary you can mess around in simple if you'd like but as you can see we lose so many options now under streaming make sure you choose that audio track that has every single source on it or else you will not be able to hear it and for recording make sure we have all of our audio tracks enabled now for the fun part figuring out our encoder and our encoder settings now if you have a high-end cpu like myself i've got a 12th gen i7 i would highly recommend using the onboard graphics in the processor so that's the intel quick sync here i'm recording this right now using it and the integrated graphics is maybe at 30 percent usage i'm recording at a high bit rate as well 
So it's it's very high powered processor. Now my old one I would have issues with, and I if you don't have a very strong CPU or an Intel with the integrated graphics, I would recommend using your graphics card if you have that. Uh, in this case, mine's the AMD HW encoder. Now if you do not have that either, if you've only got X264, that is going to be your CPU. Now if you have a weaker processor, this may give you some issues here. It's hard to say, so you're gonna have to really spend quite a bit of time dialing this in and just messing around and figure out what works for you. Now, if you're going to be streaming, make sure you have the bitrate set to constant bitrate, CBR, and a bitrate of 8,000. That's kind of the max everybody can really accept at 1080p. But for recording, I would highly recommend using, like I said, if you've got a graphics card, select that. Or if you've got the integrated graphics, choose that. Now, me personally, I record at a very high bitrate. Um, it's not as noticeable on the screen recordings as it is for like my webcam or something like that But I have found personally that if I don't have it at a high bit rate You can really see the pixels and that sort of thing. So I would recommend recording at a ver at variable bit rate I personally use 25,000 as the main bit rate and 30,000 as the max in the past for just showing the screen I use something like 8,000 and 12,000 max and it looked fine But it's just gonna be a matter of seeing what works for your system one last thing though I cannot stress how important it is to be playing around with these settings on your own to see what you can really get to work or your system it's very hard to say you know like I said if you've got a lower end system that doesn't have a graphics card or the integrated graphics you're probably gonna have to use the x264 and just play around with it and hope for the best so when we're messing around with our encoder settings, it is important to see if you are getting any encoder overload issue down here in the bottom left. It will definitely let you know um, and you can tell by your recorded video it'll be kind of laggy or maybe some frame skips or dropouts or that sort of thing. So really it's just going to be important in uh, trying and seeing what works for you and your system and raising or lowering your settings, you know, just see what the max quality you can get out of it is. The thing I would say as well is just because it says encoder Encoder overload doesn't necessarily mean you can't use what you've got. Um, I know when I would used to use my graphics card here, it would tell me encoder overload, but the recorded files would nine times out of 10 be fine, but have no issues with that. So that's just one thing to uh, be aware of as well. Now for our audio here, we can name our sources if we want and our uh, bit rates. I'd recommend using a higher audio bit rate, of course. This might increase your latency and uh, get your stuff out of sync, I'm not sure. You would just have to mess around with that and see. So moving on, let's go to audio settings real quick. Let's just make sure our audio devices are straight. Once again, the desktop audio is the voice meter aux. Desktop audio 2 can be your interface. Make sure microphone 1 is going to be whatever you're using for your microphone. I don't really mess around with the monitoring device or anything like that. And if you want to do any push to talk or push to mutes, you can do that as well. Now video. So like I mentioned earlier, I use an extended range monitor. So my base resolution is 2560 by 1080. And I will keep that the same for to record my whole monitor and then just edit that down. For you, that might be 1920 by 1080. Uh, if you don't have an HD monitor, you will need to put in whatever your you know base resolution is. Now you can scale that down for either recording sake or you know you don't match up a full 1920 by 1080 resolution something like that and if you do that you'll have to mess around with the downscale filters so for the fps that's going to be our frames per second i definitely wouldn't do anything below 60 especially in 2023 um you know if your computer can't handle it maybe do 30 but we really want to try to get as high to 60 as we can getting close to finishing up here uh hot keys i've got start and stop recording on f8 ironically in fl studio that will open up the plugin search where it's got the plugins kind of all over the place so i don't really use that and if i ever do i've just got to remember that it ends my recording so i've got that set for that you can do hot keys to open up different sources or scenes i don't really i've not really fooled with that since i haven't really live streamed much but one thing i will say is to check your microphone slash aux here and if you want to do a mute and unmute key i would highly recommend that just that way you know you can just pop over and and then you can un lastly in the advanced tab maybe try putting the process priority on high i like the color space at 709 and just the settings i've got right here now if you're going to be live streaming make sure you set it up correctly here in the stream window this might be because of the stream elements plugin but i think obs has changed now 
Uh, if you choose Twitch, it will let you add your account here so you won't have to fool with your stream key. If you use something like TikTok or whatever where you've got to use a stream key and a server, here is where you would put it in. And yeah, that pretty much concludes this video. If y'all have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, DM me on Instagram, at Siege himself. Thank you all for watching. My name is CJ, aka CJ. Thank you all for watching. Have a good whatever time of day you're watching this, and God bless.